The BBC presents The Felt, adapted for radio by Jack Pullman from a story by Ray Bradbury. The action of the play takes place 100 years in the future. Is that you, George? Yes. You're rather late, are you? Yes, I ran into Dale Lloyd. Why didn't you call me on the televiewer? I didn't think I'd get this late. Here, let me take your coat. Oh, it's all right. I'll drop it in the suction tube. No, let me have it. There. Well, thanks. I don't know why you're still bothered. I like to. Why shouldn't I? The tube takes it, presses it, hangs it away in the closet. Yes, but it doesn't give you a kiss at the same time, does it? True. Still, I could have that anyway. <laughs> Dinner ready? Yes. Come and sit down. Where are the kids? They're at the plastic carnival. Oh, yes, I remember. Ah, it's working all right, then. Yes, the man from the company came and fixed it today. What was wrong with it? I don't know. He did explain, but these engineers seem to talk a different language from the rest of us. The food molecules weren't being broken down properly or something. Anyway, it's all right now. Thank heavens. What do you mean, thank heavens? I thought I coped rather well. Oh, so you did, honey. But frankly, when it comes to grilling a steak medium rare or mixing a French dressing, that machine wins hands down. Ah, well. I had a lot of fun reading those old cookery books. I think you did us proud. Mmm. My, this tastes good, though, doesn't it? <laughs> I give in. <laughs> what did Dale Lloyd want? Mm. He called me just as I was leaving. Asked me to go and have a drink and a chat. What about? Oh, you know Dale. He's never happy unless he's worrying about something. <laughs> Usually his wife or the youngster. What was it this time? Both. The youngster mainly, though. What's wrong with him? Nothing, really. Pass the pepper, will you? It's seasoned already. I know, but I always like a little more. It's bad for your digestion. I know that, too, but pass it all the same. Mm -hmm. Thanks. What do you mean, nothing, really? Well, he's worried about the nursery. The nursery? Yes. He's had one built into the house like ours, with crystalline walls so that the kid can materialize his thoughts on the screen. He says the kid's so fascinated by it, he won't leave it. I know what he means. What did you say? I bought him another drink and told him he was exaggerating the whole thing. I'm not so sure that he is. Well, don't tell me you're worried about the nursery, too. Yes, George, quite honestly, I am. Well, I think it's absurd. He's even thinking of pulling it down after spending all that money. What does his wife think about it? She's all for it, apparently. She hates the place. She even hates the house. Why? Well, she complains she's beginning to feel unnecessary. I'll never understand women. I don't find that so hard to understand. Well, I do. Well, look at our house. It does everything for us. Baths us, feeds us, sings us to sleep. Even the lights go on and off when we enter or leave a room and we don't have to lift a finger. What's wrong with that? Nothing, if you've got other things to do in life. But supposing you haven't, what then? Who hasn't got other things to do? Children. Well, that's one reason why we put in the nursery. Yes, George, but that's what worries me. It doesn't give them anything to do except daydream. They learn from it. They learn how to have bigger and better daydreams. You pretend you're not worried about it, but you closed the nursery yourself not so long ago. That was over something else. They'd been very naughty. That's probably Peter on the televiewer. Hello, Peter. Hello, Father. I'm just calling to tell you we're on our way back. You needn't wait up. All right, son. What have you done to your hand? It looks bruised. It's nothing. I had an accident with one of their silly robots. It'll be all right. Is Wendy there? Yes, just a minute. Wendy, come here a minute. Hello, Wendy. Did you have a good time? Not really. It was rather boring. I wish we'd stayed at home in the nursery. It would have been more exciting. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You're looking a bit tired, honey. I should get home as soon as you can. I don't feel tired. If you and Mother do, you needn't wait up. Oh, Wendy. Yes, Mother? You go straight to bed when you get in. Yes, Mother. Goodbye. Bye, darling. See you in the morning, Take children. Care. Bye, Peter. You see? They wish they'd stayed in the nursery. That's all they want to do. Sit there hour after hour watching their thoughts appear on the screens. I'd have thought they'd have enjoyed the carnival. They don't enjoy anything anymore. They don't want carnivals. They don't even want me. Oh, come, Lydia. It's not as bad as that. Do I ever read to them now or tell them stories or play with them? They don't want it. They live in their own little private world and resent anyone who wants to take them away from it. 
The nursery is supposed to educate them, George, not obsess them. Well, it does educate them. The more they know about a place, the clearer the image they get. It's a wonderful stimulus to learn more. What did you see the last time you were in the nursery? You mean, uh, what place had it become? Uh-huh. Why, uh, the felt. Yes, the felt. The African felt. The hot yellow sun, the straw smell of grass, and above all, the ghastly smell of lion. Well, that's how it is with these nursery rooms. The impressions are just incredibly real. No, it's not the same nursery anymore. When did you last see something other than the African felt in there? When did you see Aladdin or Robin Hood or, or the first expedition to land on the moon? That's true. Their imaginations have gotten into a rut. It's not just a rut. They've become morbidly preoccupied with it. They do nothing but read books on Africa and the lion. We know everything about them. And every time I go in there, the heat seems more intense, the grass more yellow, and the smells more pungent. Look. Let's go and take a look at the place. You go. I'm sick of the sight of now, it. Now, come on. Don't let it get you down. After all, all we have to do is to switch the damn thing off. It's locked. Did you bring the key? Yes. I thought the children might go back into it when they came home. The felt. You see, George? Always the same. Oh, my God, that sun is hot. Ooh, a little too real for my liking. I don't see much else wrong, though. Wait a moment, though. You see, George? There they are, the lions. Far over that way. On their way to that water hole. They've just been eating. Can you make out what it is? A zebra, I think. Are you sure? Well, it's a little late to be sure. All I can see is white bone picked clean. The vultures circling overhead. What an achievement. It's unbelievably clear. Oh, those lions look as if they smelt us. We can smell them, darling, but they can't smell us. They're our image, remember, not vice versa. Our image, George? Do you want the African felt to appear on the screens when you came in? Well, the children's then. Well, those lions do seem to be moving closer. It's uncanny. Let's get out of here, George. This place gives me the shivers. No, no, wait wait a moment. If this thing works for the children, it should work for me. What are you going to do? I'll fix them. Go away. Go away, I tell you. Let's have Aladdin and his lamp. George, let's go. Come on. I want Aladdin, I tell you. Aladdin. Aladdin! I don't want the felt anymore. I want Aladdin, do you hear? Full room's out of order. It won't respond anymore. Oh, it can't respond. The children have thought about Africa and the lions and killing so much that the room's in a rut. No. I think Peter said it that way so it can't change. Peter doesn't know about machinery. I don't know. He's a pretty wise kid for his age. Well, let's go and have a drink. Drink this, you'll feel better. Thanks. That place always upsets me. I don't know what they see in it. What are we going to do? I don't know. We spent thousands on that wretched place, and it's brought us nothing but trouble. You must tell the children to stop reading about Africa. That'll do for a start, I suppose. And I think we'd better lock the nursery up for a while. I don't know about that. You remember what happened the last time I locked it up? The tantrums they threw? They live for the place. It's got to be locked, at least for a while, until I get my nerves settled. You need a rest. George, why don't we turn off the whole house and take a vacation? Where? We could go up to the cabin in the mountains. You mean you want to fry my eggs for me? Yes. <laughs> and darn my socks and sweep the house? Yes, why not? I need to change more than anything else. You need a rest, too. I've been awfully nervy lately. I uh, suppose I am smoking too much. And drinking too much, and taking too many tranquilizers. I think we're both beginning to feel unnecessary in this house. I don't think the kids will like the idea very much. Well, they'll just have to put up with it for a while. It won't hurt them to do something they don't want to do for a change. Here they are. Hello, Peter. 
Hello, Wendy. Hello, Father. Hello. You're back earlier than I thought, children. We rather thought we'd like to spend a while in the nursery before going to bed. Oh, uh, yes, the nursery. We wanted to have a talk with you about that, actually. Oh? Yes, we both think you're spending too much time there. It was put in for us to spend our time there. Not to this extent it wasn't. You're using it as a form of escape instead of as a creative amusement. Would you care to define the difference? No, I wouldn't care. And I suggest you adopt a more respectful tone, my lad. Wendy, have you noticed us using the nursery as a form of escape? I don't give a damn whether she has or not. No, Shut sir. up! George. I won't have such impertinence. I don't know what's got into them. Peter, you've no right to use that tone to your father. This is a serious matter. Not only have you been living in that nursery, but you've been thinking far too much about the African felt. I don't know what you mean. I'll tell you what your mother means. Every time we go in there, it's Africa, Africa. There are a thousand and one things those screens and slides can produce, but it's nothing but sun and stinking lions. It's got to stop. There is no Africa in the nursery. Oh. Your father and I were up there just before you came in. The African felt came on as soon as we entered. I don't know what you've done to it, but neither he nor I could produce any other picture. There is no Africa in the nursery. I've never said this to you before, Peter, but you're lying. Do you remember any Africa in the nursery, Wendy? No, Peter. Run and see and come and tell us. All right. Wendy, come back here. Did you lock the door, George? No, I forgot. Blast it. Wendy! She'll be back in a moment, Father. I don't know what's got into you two. You never behaved like this before. Nothing has got into us. I think you're making a great fuss about nothing. And I wouldn't lock the nursery door if I were you, Father. Why not? Neither Wendy nor I would like that at all. Can't you see, Peter? We're only trying to do what we think is best for you. You're trying to deprive us of the nursery. We won't be deprived From of the From now nursery. on, you'll do as you're told. A little old-fashioned 20th century discipline is what you need. There are laws against striking children, Father. Well, some of them are going to get broken around here once in a while. Peter, we don't want to restrict your activities. But neither you nor Wendy is exercising any sense of proportion. You've both become so obsessed with Africa that the image seems almost to be living an independent existence of its own. I've told you there is no Africa in the nursery. Peter is right. There is no Africa in the nursery. We'll soon see about this. Come with me, both of you. Come on. You too, Wendy. You see, Father? Come on in, both of you. Why, two sweet little children. And what might they call you, my dear? My name is Hansel. And this is my sister, Gretel. What very pretty name. We've never seen a house made of cakes and ginger nose before. Well, there aren't many. You see, Father? I see, all right. I told you there was no Africa. Outside, both of you. But I told you... Out, I say, and you, Wendy, go to bed. What? You heard me, go to bed. Very well. Come on, Wendy. And see that you stay there. You think Wendy changed it? She must have done. Changed it from the felt to the fairy tale? Yes. Why? I don't know. But it's staying locked until I find out. I'm beginning to be sorry I ever bought this house and that nursery. The children are neurotic at all, a room like it's that. It's supposed to help them work off their neurosis in a healthy way. Well, it's not. Something is happening to them, and that room, it, 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 it's unhealthy. We've well, given them everything they wanted. And no secrecy, disobedient lies. They're insufferable, let's face it. 
treat us as if we were their offspring. They're spoiled and we're spoiled. You know, they've been acting funny ever since you forbade them to take up the Rockies. Well, they're too young to do that kind of thing alone. I don't think I was being unreasonable. Still, they've been decidedly cool ever since. I think I'll ask David McLean to come down. He's a psychiatrist. He ought to know what to do. But there's no more Africa in the nursery. I've got a feeling there will be. Anyway, it won't do any harm to have him look over the place. He can have a look at the children as well while he's here. Come to think of it, he can have a look at me, too. Oh, come on. Let's go to bed. I feel... Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Father. Have you had your breakfast? Yes. I'd like a word with you, then. What about? You broke into the nursery last night, didn't you? Well? Wendy and I don't think you have any right to lock the nursery. I've tried to be reasonable with you, Peter. I tried to treat you as a grown-up. It clearly doesn't work. You want to treat me like a grown-up when I agree with you and treat me like a child when I don't. That's not true. I've allowed you a lot of freedom, too much, it seems to me. I've only prevented you from doing things I've considered dangerous or harmful. And playing in that nursery has become both. Do you intend to lock it up for good? That depends. On what? On you and your sister. If you intersperse this Africa with a little variety, Sweden perhaps, or the Wizard of I Oz... I thought we were free to play as we liked. You are within limits. But I'm not having you living in that spurious African dream world. It's not a dream world, Father. That's exactly what I mean. You've got to the stage where you think it's real. You've almost got your mother and me believing it. Well, it's time you had a rest from it. So I'm locking up the whole house and we're going up to the cabin for a few weeks. I don't want to go. Why not? I don't like it up there. You liked it last time? No, I hated it. Lighting fires, making beds, reading books. It was horrible. Well, it'll be good for a change. I'll teach you some self-reliance and self-discipline. You'll have to do something instead of just looking and listening. Are you going to shut off the house soon? We're considering it. I wouldn't consider it any more if I were you, Father. Are you threatening me? I just wouldn't, that's all. If I were you... At all. What seems to be the trouble? Have you eaten, David? Oh, yes, thanks. I had something before I came out. David, you're a psychiatrist. Oh, I should hope so. I'd like you to take a look at our nursery. You too? I've had a look at two or three recently. What for? Well, they're tending to produce morbid states of introversion among the children. Not many, you understand, just one or two. Seems to depend a lot on the children. In what way? Well, if they are highly strung and introverted to start with, the fantasy of the nursery becomes the only world which is real for them. They're as completely enclosed by it as a madman, to use an old-fashioned term, is enclosed in his hallucination. That was more or less the conclusion Lydia and I had reached. Personally, I think they are too real, and I think they were introduced too soon by the Department of Education. Still, that's just my opinion. Uh, what's the trouble about? Uh, you saw the nursery about a year ago when you dropped by. Did you notice anything peculiar about it then? Can't say I did. Usual violences, tendencies towards paranoia here and there, but that's usual in children. They feel persecuted by their parents all the time. Come and have another look at it. See what you think. All right. Are you coming, Lydia? No, no, I think I'll stay here. I've seen enough of it. Come on then, David. I locked the nursery, but the children broke back into it. I let them stay there so they could form the patterns for you to see. We'll walk straight in on them. Then they won't switch anything off. Hello, Father. Run outside a moment, children. No, no, don't change the metal combination. Leave the walls as they are. Go on now, both of you. All right. Come on, Wendy. Yes, Peter. 
You see, David? Africa. I see all right. My God, the heat and the smell. I'm glad those lions are just finishing a meal. I wish I could make out what it was they'd been eating. Those screams sound human and familiar somehow. I sometimes feel that if I brought high-powered binoculars here... And... I hardly think so. Uh, how long has this been going on? Over a month. It certainly doesn't feel good. I want facts, David, not feelings. My dear George, a psychiatrist never saw a fact in his life. He only hears about feelings, vague things. This doesn't feel good, I tell you. Trust me, I have a nose for something bad. What do you think we should do? My advice is to have the whole damn room torn down and have the children brought to me every day for treatment. Is it that bad? I'm afraid so. This room's have become a channel towards destructive thoughts. Those kids have death and decay on their minds to an abnormal degree. Why? I don't know. But this room has ceased to fulfill its function. Didn't you sense this before? No. I sense only that you'd spoiled your children more than most. And now you're letting them down in the same way. You sound like Peter. Then I must be right. What have you been doing to them? Now, I wouldn't let them take the rocket out. What else? No, I've taken a few machines from the house and threatened to close the nursery for good if they didn't use it properly. I did close it for a few days. Uh-huh. Well, what does that mean? Once they had a Santa Claus. Now they have a Scrooge. Children prefer Santa. You can't play Santa Claus all the time. You've let this room and this house replace you and their affections. This room is mother and father to them. Far more important than their real parents. You're probably right. I've been so busy, I've been glad to have them up here occupied. Now you want to shut the room off. No wonder there's hatred here. You can feel it coming out of that sky. Just feel that, son. I don't know why Lydia and I deserve this. We've given the kids everything we could afford. You haven't given enough of yourselves, though, George. Oh, it's not an uncommon fault these days. Like too many others, you've built your life around creature comfort. You'd starve tomorrow if something went wrong with your kitchen. You wouldn't even know how to tap an egg. You think I should turn it off for good, then? Yes. We'll have to make a fresh start. It won't be too much of a shock for them, shutting it off abruptly. It's a risk we'll have to take. I don't want them going any deeper into this, that's all. Oh, those lions! Did you see the look they gave us? <laughs> One of deep personal interest, I should say. I suppose there's... There's no way in which... What? They, they couldn't become real, could they? No. Some fault in the machinery? No. Well, that settles it anyway. I'll shut the house off and we'll go away for a few days. Good idea. Uh, where will you go? We'll go up to the cabin and get some real fresh pine tree air. When? Tomorrow morning. No sense in hanging around. Quite agree. I tell you what, I'll uh, call in in the morning just before you leave. You, you know, in case you have any trouble with the children. I think I can handle them. That's good of you, David. Well, I'll push off now. This place gives me the creeps. Paranoia thick around here. Uh, see you in the morning. Uh, yeah, yes, and uh, thanks a lot, David. Don't mention it. Seeing you. Don't cry, Wendy. I want the nursery. Make him turn on the nursery, Peter. Everything ready, Lydia? Practically. I just got one or two things to do. Have you turned everything off? I killed the whole house. <laughs> Oh, shut up, Wendy. I hate you. I can't help that. I wish you were dead. We were for a long time. Now we're really going to live. So you can both go and get yourselves ready. I won't go. I won't go. Oh, please turn it on for a few minutes, please. Just a few minutes in the nursery, please. If we turn it on for a few minutes, will you get ready quietly? Yes. Oh, yes. Just another minute, please. George. No. Let them have a few minutes. Just a few minutes, mind. And then you get ready without any fuss. Yes. Promise? Yes, just a few more minutes. And you, Peter? Yes. All right. You turn on the nursery, Lydia. But just for a few minutes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Come along, then, children. Dry your eyes, Wendy. That horrible Africa. What can they see in it? Did you leave them in the nursery? Yes, I wanted to change. They'll be all right. 
I shall be so glad to get away. Well, it won't be long now. This house seems like a graveyard. Whatever made us buy it. Pride, money, foolishness. We weren't ready for it. We let it take charge of us. Men have never been ready for the things they invent. Do you think we've done the children much harm? I don't know. But I'm worried. They're not the same children anymore. In what way? I don't know. But those kids, they, they don't just have hallucinations. There seems to be something more, something much more unhealthy. Maybe the rest will do them good. I hope so. Father! Mother! What is it, Peter? Hurry, both of you. The nursery, come quick. George, something's happened. Quick, the nursery. We're, we're coming, Peter. There's no one here. Peter! Wendy! I wonder where they... George! The door! It's closing! Peter! Peter, open this door! Do you hear me? Peter! George! The lions! The lions, George! Peter, open this door! Wendy, for God's sake! George! Coming closer! <sighs> George! Peter! Wendy! George! Look out! Lydia! Oh, uh, hello, you two. Hello, Hi. Mr. McLean. My, it's hot in this room. Don't you ever get tired of playing in here? No. I thought you'd all be ready to leave. Uh, where's your father and mother? They'll be here directly. Good. Whew, it's hot. Wonder it hasn't sent you both to sleep. Those lions look rather sleepy today, too. They're always sleepy after they've eaten, Mr. McLean. Will you have a cup of tea? The Felt by Ray Bradbury was adapted for radio by Jack Pullman. The part of Lydia was played by Diana Olson and George by John Casabon, with John Hewitt and Nina Ludlow as Peter and Wendy. Production by Frederick Bradnam for the BBC.